We're back once again with our appraiser extraordinaire, Donald Osborne, with three cars that couldn't be more different, but have one thing in common. We've got three cars that, the models of which were featured in great movie chases. In fact, one of these cars is an actual movie star. We've got a 1965 Austin Mini Cooper S. That would be from the Italian from job? the Italian job, the original Italian job. Right. We've got a 1970 Challenger RT from Vanishing Point. Right. And a 1966 Ford Thunderbird from Thelma and Louise. And this is the one that went over the cliff. Well, it went over a movie cliff. <laughs> okay. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the Mini Cooper. Alec Isagonis, who worked for the British Motor Corporation, was given the brief to create a people's car for England that would be the Austin 7, the Mini. The Challenger RT was the star of a great chase in a 1971 movie called Vanishing Point. This delivery driver has to get a 440 Magnum RT Challenger to stop him for, right. for speeding, and he just won't stop of all time. Sure. Now this one, of course. Not only is this a 1966 Ford Thunderbird convertible, but it is the 1966 Ford Thunderbird convertible that starred in the movie Thelma and Louise in 1991. And today, this car lives in the Peterson Museum. I remember years ago, they had Gary Cooper's Duesenberg on display, a Minnesota car, and I think they said Carol Lombard sat right here, and people would come over and then look at, uh, what do you think you're going to see? <laughs> but they would look at the seat. She sat there. All about the romance, yeah, yeah. Jay. That's what a movie car is about. This is the car that the mirrors got ripped off of during the chase scene. Right. And, and it, uh, it, it's pretty beat up, isn't it? It's a pretty beat up car. And when you see an actual movie car, you realize that they don't look half as good in real life as they look on the screen. They don't have to. Just like movie stars. <laughs> exactly. Another part of the great magic of making movies is the fact that the actors most often don't drive while they're recording their dialogue. And in fact, there are actually tow hooks welded into the front frame so that the car could be towed or put on a flatbed. So, what effect, if any, on collectible value does a type of a car appearing in a film make? Well, I think it does add value. Now, do you want me to pick my favorite, what I think is the most valuable? I would probably go with the Challenger because rare when they were built, the Hemi version, the rarest, the most expensive, especially with a manual transmission like that one. I'm gonna go with the Challenger. You challenge me to prove that you're wrong. No, I Mini Cooper you. To, yes, I challenge you, yes. All right, Donald, which of these vehicles has appreciated the most? All right, so this is the story of values. Five years ago, a Mini Cooper S like this could have been bought for about $32,000. Today, it would be about $38,000. Okay. So, a modest increase. A 1966 Thunderbird like this one, not the movie car, but a 1966 right. Thunderbird like this, five years ago would have been about $41,000. Today, you get it for about $40,000, an actual decline in value. A 440 Magnum Challenger, about five years ago, would have been about $84,000. Right. Today, it would be $116,000. Right. And a 426 Hemi like this would be about $195,000. So, as much as I hate to admit it, Jay is right. I Mini Cooper you. <laughs> but, going back to the actual cars. Right. Although this car is unlikely to leave the Peterson Museum's collection anytime soon, an actual movie hero car documented would certainly bring at least four times what a regular production example would bring. The value add here comes from the fact that this car is so important to the plot of the movie. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.